Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY23 conference call of Sigachi Industries Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anil Sonpal from Valorum Advisors. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Anil Sonpal from Valorum Advisors. We represent the investor relations of Sigachi Industries Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the first quarter of financial year 2023. Before we begin, let me mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's con call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Now let me introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for opening remarks. We firstly have with us Ms. Amitra Arjuna, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. O.S. Reddy, Chief Financial Officer, Ms. Shreya Mitra, Company Secretary. Now without any further delay, I request Ms. Amit Sinha to start with his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Anuj. Very good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to welcome you all to the earnings conference call for the first quarter of FI23. Firstly, I hope everyone is keeping safe and well. In the interest of some of the people who are new to the company, let me first start by giving a brief overview of the company, after which Mr. O.S. Reddy, our CFO, will brief you on the financial performance for the quarter and the review. Sigachi was incorporated in the year 89, 1989, and today we are one of the leading manufacturers of microcrystalline cellulose in the world. Our company manufacturers uh, manufacture high-quality cellulose-based recipients, which are predominantly find usage in the pharmaceutical, supplement, and food industry. The company has created a niche in manufacturing highly innovative pre-formulated excipients and 60-plus widely used excipients of international quality standards apart from the customized solutions. From our state-of-the-art R&D facility, we ensure continuous innovation to efficiently meet evolving customer demands. <clears throat> we have two manufacturing facilities in Gujarat and one in Telangana, from where we ensure supply chain reliability for our customers in India and across the globe. Our total capacity from all these three facilities is more than 13,000 metric tons per annum, uh, which we are further enhancing through our ongoing CAPEX plans to 20,000 metric tons per annum. We at Sugachi have a global sales and distribution network and export to more than 45 countries across Asia, Australia, the American continent, Europe and Middle East. Now I would request our CFO to give you a brief on the financial performance, after which I'll give you the operational highlights of the quarter. Over to OSR. Thank you, Mr. Sinha, and good afternoon, everyone. Let me brief you on the financial performance of the first quarter of financial year ending 2023. The operational revenue for the first quarter was rupees 78 crores, representing an increase of around 43% year on year. EBITDA reported was rupees 16 crores, which an increase of approximately 34% year on year, and the EBITDA margin stood at 20.82%. The net profit after tax reported was rupees 13 crores, which increased by 42% year on year, while the tax margin percentage was 16.35%. Now I hand over the call back to our MD to give you the operational highlights. Over to... Thank you, CFO. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, CFO. So on the operational front, uh, the revenue growth was primarily driven by increased demand for MCC across all the industries, with a volume growing at approximately 10% and realizations at 19% on a Q on Q basis, quarter on quarter basis. The export sales increased to 75.43% in Q1 FY23 as compared to 73.6% in Q1 FY22. 
due to the continuous efforts of, on enhancing the global client base through our marketing and product customizations. We focused on high margin yielding product mix with cost effective manufacturing processes and effective management of inventory, which resulted in improvement of EBITDA and profitability on, on a quarter on quarter basis. The consumption of material reduced to 47% uh, from 51% in Q1 FI22 due to adoption of effective processes and of course a favorable product mix. We expect this trend to continue in sustaining the profitable levels. Furthermore, capacities of around 7,000 tons will be added during the later part of FI23 which will contribute to additional revenue growth in the coming financial years. We are also putting high focus on our R&D capabilities through cost effective manufacturing processes thereby it remaining as the manufacturer of choice and supplier of choice in the XCPM industry. With this, uh, we are now open, on, open the floor to the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Keshav Kumar from Raxon's Investors. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, sir. Congrats for a good quarter. I have a couple of uh, questions. The, uh, the first one is the director of our uh, uh, statutory auditor, Mr. Adi Narayan, is also the director of Usha Kiran Finance, which was allotted shares on a preferential basis back in 2013. And uh, Amit, sir, is disclosed as a part of the promoter uh, with 0.1%
that the margins are much superior. So if you compare uh, all in all, uh, you would see that Gujarat Microvax, the margins are better than Fugachi's. But if you just compare their product portfolio of MCC with our product portfolio of MCC, uh, we are definitely better off than them. Uh, well, sir, you'd like to add in anything? Yes, yes sir. Uh, to supplement it, uh, in future uh, we are going to manufacture this uh, other MC, even CCS and uh, other complex uh, tech events also. Thereby, our margin also we hope it will increase. Okay, sir. And my last question is that yeah, we have analyzed uh, their um, uh, profit also. They manufacture along with MCC, they manufacture CCS and other uh, small uh, other tech uh, events also. That's why there is a higher uh, margin is there for them. Even going forward, uh, we hope for uh, Sidachi also will uh, end the market. Yes, sir. And my last question is that uh, what is the current realization for the product and what is the impact of uh, Uber Plus? Uh, could you please repeat? Yes, sir. What is the current realization for the product and what is the impact of Wood Pulp Rising? Uh, yeah, current realization is uh, for first, first quarter it is uh, 216, uh, point, around 217 rupees. Last year it was 182 rupees. And uh, going forward, uh, this will increase further. Yes. And uh, any impact on good, uh, impact of food prices? Uh, yes, I would answer that. Uh, so uh, what we what we have seen, sir, is that at this moment we are able to pass on the. Uh, the increased pulp prices onto the customers. Uh, so uh, that's a very big comfort. Uh, we hope that the wood pulp prices uh, should average out and should get stable very soon. We were expecting it to happen at in the Q2, but uh, it, it still continues to be uh, you know, um, going up a bit. But uh, we are hopeful that by the first half of the year, uh, it should stabilize and probably uh, later uh, even taper down. Okay, sir. Thank you. I have more questions. I will come back in the queue. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is on the line of Rajesh Jain from NB Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, yes, Rajesh. Um, good afternoon, sir. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Thank you, Rajesh. Uh, I hope you're also keeping well. Yes, sir. We are good. Sir, I have broadly three questions. Uh, one is with reference to the nutraceutical segment, uh, which you have announced quite some time back, where we have uh, entering into that segment, which has a huge potential. Uh, the press release yes. doesn't talk about uh, one who are the main competitors and what are the benefits okay. that company would be offering to you know these competitors, uh, these custo their customers to get the business from them. OK. So, uh, so you would like to have the name of the competitors and which way uh, the customers would uh, get benefited on account of uh, you know, customer acquisition priorities. Is yeah. that right, sir? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, like, like we indicated in the press release, uh, we are looking ahead, uh, or rather we have already launched the the, you know, the human nutrition vertical of our uh, nutritional segment. And uh, that primarily would be looking at uh, certain premixes, uh, which are uh, the need of the R uh, in uh, certain uh, end market segments like uh, the fortified food and beverages, which is a private segment. Uh, we also have the fortified food and beverages, which is the institutional segment, which is more on the D2G, the government part, where there, there is on tender. Uh, we have uh, the pharmaceutical premixes, which is again uh, going in for uh, the tablets, which has uh, specifically certain vitamins and to an extent certain minerals uh, being taken in. So these are the certain premixes at which we are focusing on. Now, in terms of our uh, uh, custom um, competitors, I would say uh, Hexagon could be uh, one of them. Uh, there, there, are, there are private limited companies like PD Navkar. Uh, su uh, Supreme Pharmaceuticals. Uh, these these are some of the customers. Uh, DSM also DSM I could qualify as uh, the market leader in the premix segment. So these these are uh, the competitors. Now in terms of the value add over what my other uh, competitors are doing, uh, because of our expertise in the formulation segment, uh, 
uh, we do have strength in uh, you know in the tablet technologies and the suspension technologies wherein we could work on giving them a better product mix uh, wherein their tableting activities at the formulators end would uh, go without a rejection wherein we will be able to put in a better mix of vitamins uh, so that their end criteria is met uh, i i just give you an example such to one of our prospective customers who is a very big company um in fact they are a conglomerate uh, we, we were discussing about fortification of tea leaves and uh, in the tea leaves uh, the customer wanted uh, vitamin a and vitamin d to be fortified so that uh, they could show it as uh, fortified and uh, it could be advertised to the customers accordingly hello hello uh mr jain are you done with your question yeah yeah i have uh, sir okay in, in further to this uh, product segment uh, i was told that you know this new products uh, have mcc as one of the constituent so does it mean that are we supplying uh, you know mcc also this uh, to these customers earlier to these customers we are not selling directly uh, but uh, we sell to the agents but they may take it from them but uh, we are not selling to these people directly we were not the, okay, okay. No, no, the purpose of asking that question was uh, once you launch these products do we have to conduct uh, testing or trials for this new product with these customers yeah yeah yes we need to do it okay so sir how much time will this take for the product to commercially launch Uh, it will take uh, maybe uh, immediately we can do it, but only trial it will take. Uh, as a trial order, we will provide and they test the quality test and all. If that is okay, we will produce. It will not take uh, much time, even uh, not more than uh, even uh, one day or uh, even 24 hours or even just uh, within two days, 48 hours max. It depends upon the upon the product. How many stages are there like that? It is even uh, in 12 hours also we can complete the trial. And the maximum of even uh, 72 hours, 40 to 72 hours on higher side. For this product, the same as uh, at the same level as the MCC, and how much revenue can be expected in the next two to three years? Yeah, MCC also is the uh, part of this uh, material uh, that uh, product, and uh, uh, you are asking uh, something else. and uh, uh, margins margins yeah margins sir uh, that is uh, here also there is a sales mix is there it depending upon the product and uh, we hope little lesser than uh, mcc but uh, here uh, we will get even uh, turnover uh, we have asked uh, this may be in uh, current year uh, we may be reaching around 18 to 20 cr okay uh, that is it and how big is the potential sir let's say 3 years or 5 years down the line can we go up to 100 plus crores in this segment alone uh, in this segment uh, yearly uh, not less than 50 uh, crores as of now but uh, going forward uh, in a, that we have to assess further okay uh, but sir uh, it will there is a good good uh, scope is there for growth okay sir in the one of the interviews post listing uh, you had mentioned about you know food industry going to contribute around 30% to the sales in you know the 523 so this product
pollen is there, bottom line would grow better than that. Ah, uh, bottom line also will grow. At least uh, there is a, definitely there is a sustainability in uh, uh, bottom line profit, and uh, uh, we hope it will increase further. Thank you very much sir, for answering all the questions. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference, we request you to limit your questions to two per participant only. If time permits, you can come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is in the line of Anand from AS Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, yes, Anand. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. first question is about the nutraceutical segment. So, sir mentioned about uh, about 18 to 20 crore sales expected this FY23. So, at what sales level, like uh, what is the cost structure here and at what uh, sales level will be break even, sir, in this segment? Yeah, this is a EBITDA positive this year. We need to get some uh, details, but uh, the margins are, as I said, uh, this is a little lower than uh, uh, the MCC will be there. Mm -hmm. So will we will this uh, be a bit of positive this year? Yeah, yeah, the bit of positive only would be there. We expect the the positive bit only. So in the sense that uh, will there be any like uh, higher cost as we are launching this new division, and because of that, bit of uh, margin will get lower. Is there is there is there a positive uh, like lower this? Lower would be there, but uh, okay, uh, but uh, this uh, still uh, that is under initial stage, and uh, we'll come up uh, the outcome with uh, in okay. time. Okay. And similarly about this OTC segment also, uh, like what kind of investment is required here and uh, uh, like... Uh, investment what, also what? not much because uh, we get these products manufactured from outside, uh, contract manufacturing and then uh, we will sell and uh, through with this uh, our marketing network also will increase. We will have uh, improved marketing network and uh, uh, maybe in this segment also uh, little uh, even uh, less than uh, the MCC margins, but it's an additional revenue without with the minimum capital. This is only we don't set up any manufacturing facility, and we get these products manufactured uh, from third party and on our uh, brand name we sell. Okay, so this uh, will this require like a lot of hiring of lot of uh, MRs and all that like how like, uh, for the distribution network and like how does it work? Do we have the distribution network for uh, this OTC segment? Yeah, yeah. Right now we are establishing uh, it. We are, we are, we are establishing it. Can I speak this? Hello. Uh, yeah. Right now we are establishing uh, this uh, okay. distribution network and market network we are establishing. And uh, which is uh, which will be helpful for our uh, OTC and uh, Neutra marketing market also. Okay. Uh, I am done with my question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The thank next you. question is on the line of Darshil Zaveri from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, uh, so congratulations. You are audible. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations on a good set of numbers, sir. So I'm a bit new to the company, so could I just uh, ask a few basic questions? Uh, are new capacities supposed to kick in by end of this year. Uh, so uh, what kind of... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I lost the last question. What kind of? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello, yeah, please. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. I can ask you uh, that uh, I'm a bit new to the company. So sorry for the basic questions. I just wanted to know uh, our new capacities are kicking in uh, at the end of the this end of this year. So in FY24, what additional revenue can we expect, and what could be the capacity utilization for the new capacities? Yes, the new capacities which will come into uh, line is uh, 7,000 metric tons per annum. That uh, will come in uh, fourth quarter. Fourth quarter maybe we will be occupying a very small uh, uh, portion of it, and uh, in uh, by 24, uh, we'll be achieving 60% um, uh, of that uh, increased capacity. So anyway, the existing capacities we are operating at even 95%. Uh, and uh, also, uh, 
the growth in this year's revenue how much would it be driven by volume and how much would it be by value yeah volume more in the first quarter that is uh, 10% and the value is around 20% 19 well, 19 20% is there uh-huh. So, uh, will that because, continue? Uh, the third quarter, uh, the third quarter, additional uh, quantities will come, and then uh, it will add up more in uh, quantity. Uh, so, could you? Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Zaveri. There's a lot of disturbance from your line. Oh uh, yeah, uh, I'm a bit better. Uh, so slightly better. You may please proceed. Yeah, uh, sorry, so uh, sorry, sorry for the disturbance. I just wanted to ask. So we have a volume growth of ten percent and value growth of twenty percent. Uh, so that should continue this year. Uh, this year, uh, fourth quarter, we are adding up uh, additional uh, uh, this thing capacity, and with that, uh, quantities will add little more. And uh, anyway, uh, that uh, price realization will uh, increase because of uh, the healthier sales mix. Because the special grade sales, sales mix is increasing, because of that uh, it will increase. The price also will increase, and uh, the quantities also will increase. Because uh, right now we don't have uh, the capacity also. We are operating at around 95 percent, and uh, fourth quarter we'll get the additional capacities, and then uh, quantities also will go up. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. That answers all my questions. So all the best for the future. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yoganj Jaiswani from Mittal Analytics. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yeah, yes, please. Audible. Uh, so, couple of uh, questions. So, on the OTC side, the new building that you mentioned, uh, you you clarified that you won't be setting up a manufacturing union while you do this trading. It. So, uh, given our historical experience. Uh, why are we venturing into this uh, segment? And also, from what I understand, uh, this is a very, very competitive area, and uh, our expertise has been more on the MCP and the HCPM side. So, why have we taken this decision to get into this segment, especially at a time when we are having a very big CAPEX ongoing of 120 plus? Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Jeswani. There's a lot of disturbance from your line, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Is it better now? So slightly yeah. better. Yeah. So I'm saying uh, the OTC segment that we have launched. Why are we getting into this, especially at a time when we have already committed ourselves to a very big capex? Yeah, that uh, capex anyway that is uh, going on. This uh, existing MCC expansion is going on, and CCC, CCS also cross carbon sodium also that will go. And apart from that, uh, this OTC or uh, this uh, nutraceutical, uh, this marketing network is required, and then uh, even that marketing network will help for further uh, increase in uh, sales of MCC. Uh, that's why here uh, we are not uh, setting up of any manufacturing facility. Uh, only we get it manufactured from uh, outsiders. We contract research, uh, contract manufacturing we do, and then uh, we sell our uh, products. And right now, uh, for the initial uh, basic information, and then after our uh, complete study, uh, there is some uh, uh, decent margins are there. But okay, anyway, uh, uh, we agree that uh, there is uh, less than uh, the MCC margins are there. But anyway, we don't uh, we don't have to incur any.
let's see what we are today. Uh, but our overall objective is that uh, we get into the B2C space because uh, B2C space in this segment, uh, there is bound to be growth coming in. In fact, it's already post-COVID, there has been a lot of change in the uh, consumer behavior. And uh, we feel that uh, we have the inherent competence to take advantage of this by having certain products which are aligned to the customer needs uh, in line with our R&D and capability and the competence and uh, be able to push this into the market. When we take our baby steps, uh, we of course will not have such margins, but going forward as we expand, have brand extensions coming out of whatever we sell, we are bound to be getting into positions where we are among the top few and thereby we will be having a reasonable level of margins. Our overall long-term objective is that we remain ahead of positive of the 20% data what we have been uh, having all these years. All right. Uh, that's really helpful, sir. So my second Sorry question, to interrupt, uh, Mr. Jaiswani. May we request that you return to the question? This is please? just my second question. Uh, sir, there are participants waiting for their turn. Sure. Thank you. The next question. Thank you, sir. The next question is on the line of Darshit Shah from Nirvana Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, so my question is to Mr. Amit. Uh, so uh, we, we we spoke about JRS numbers, and I understand JRS, the contribution of CCS is almost 50%, and that's the reason the margins are higher. Now, if you look at another company which uh, we dig a little deep into, that's Signet. Uh, Excipients. Uh, I'm not mm -hmm. sure whether they're manufacturing here or kind of trading. They are now 70% held by IMCD India. And their NCC yes. uh, sales, if you look, uh, the realizations are quite high, around 6 lakh uh, rupees per metric ton. So, mm -hmm. any uh, mm -hmm. thoughts mm -hmm. or uh, idea you'd have about that? Why the realization is so high for their NCC sales? Yes. Yes, yes, Mr. Dashit. I'll just tell you, uh, Signet Corporation uh, was a trading house. And um, uh, they had some of the, uh, you know, the leaders uh, as principals. So they had DuPont as one of their principals. And uh, they had India, India, Bangladesh, and uh, uh, Sri Lanka as their regions. So they were actually importing the uh, finished products, stocking it, and selling it out to the local industry in India. Uh, now, because they were having leaders in the industry, leaders, DuPont is uh, the number one player in the industry, uh, they had different, uh, different pricing, you know, the, the industry leader level pricing. And uh, that speaks about the reason that uh, they have certain uh, uh, average realizations which are better than us. Uh, now, on the second part of the question where they, uh, it shows as approximately 6 lakhs per ton, uh, I believe that it's a combination of a lot of other XCPNs uh, which kind of uh, are being sold together under the broad name of cellulose-based XCPNs. So they're not really a manufacturing house, they're a trading house. Okay, so yeah, so you mean to say that because of uh, the MNC kind of uh, uh, profile they have the while they get products from Viewpoint and all, the pricing uh, uh, varies a, a lot. So would it be uh, fair to assume that, uh, I mean, since we kind of also cater to domestic and market here, uh, and I, uh, earlier I understand that you said the product profile more or less is not that different uh, uh, when we kind of uh, either we sell or probably any other uh, competitor sells. So in this case, uh, would it be fair to assume that uh, the realization would be different uh, if you kind of the products are imported? Uh, is it getting uh, the same domestic market? Um, so uh, when when it is the world leaders who are selling it locally, uh, they have a different price point. I think one would agree to that. Um, the second reason that it looks a bit uh, enormous or big in size is on account of the depreciated rupee. Uh, because, you know, uh, you're converting it into the rupee form. What we, when we look around, uh, we usually see uh, that uh, they are a notch higher than our pricing in dollars. And uh, if the product mix, uh, what they sell is better, uh, then they go a couple of notches higher. Okay, got it. So the price is a bit higher for them than what we kind of uh, sell in domestic. That would be a fair assumption. Yes. Right? Uh, 
Yes, yes. Uh, because they are leaders, uh, they manage to extract the price from the big players, and sometimes big players discount out the local strength of uh, industries here, and they believe that uh, importing from the leaders would give them an edge by spending a bit more. Uh, it's nothing else. Uh, there are so many customers where we have kind of displaced uh, the top num number one uh, player in the world, and uh, we have, we continue to be supplying them even today. Got it. So, would you kind of uh, would we kind of uh, kind of dig deep into all these clients because if we look at their volumes, what they did um, a year back was somewhere around eight to nine thousand metric tons. Uh, so, can that be an addressable market also to us in India, or you think the customer profile is completely different than what we can cater to? Your second statement speaks the answer that their customer profile are primarily the innovators. And historically, innovator, uh, innovator companies have been working with the world number one. Uh, we have been trying to get into the innovator um, companies, uh, but it is still work in progress. And um, their customer profile is primarily the innovator, whereas ours is uh, more to do with the generics. Got it, got it. And the last question on the ethanol side, where we had announced uh, a project or kind of uh, uh, drawing both states, of going yes. into that. So uh, is that still on the board or we have uh, kind of uh, moved ahead, uh, uh, I mean, in terms of not doing that? Uh, so uh, we are kind of uh, mentally, uh, you know, going on the other side of the border where we are feeling that it might not be the best thing to do. So we are looking at every possible alternatives and maybe in another couple of months, uh, we should be very clear on this and we will bring it out. Uh, we, are, we are having a debate with uh, a lot of industry people trying to discuss certain situation among our own team members and then putting it across uh, to every other people whom we feel are relevant and, you know, the industry veterans. We are trying to assimilate, uh, but overall we feel that probably uh, it will be a very tough change for us. But at this moment, it's not a decision, it's a work in progress. And we should update uh, uh, this maybe in another couple of months on this. Okay, so thank you so much for your answers. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. The next question is on the line of Anurag Dinkar Patil from Roha Asset Managers. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, in terms of human intuition segment, are we outsourcing the manufacturing or using the own capacity? Uh, which segment did you speak of, Anurag? I, I missed out. Human? Human nutrition, sir. Human nutrition. So uh, what we have done is, uh, we are not outsourcing it. Uh, we have taken on lease a, a premix facility, and uh, we are manufacturing it in that premix facility itself. Okay. So, sir, uh, over the next two to three years, can you just elaborate on your plans in terms of capital allocation? Because we are thinking a lot of projects simultaneously, like ethanol, human nutrition, the OTC products. We also incorporated a subsidiary in Dubai. So if you can just elaborate on that hmm. part over the next two, three years, what are your preferences particularly? Thank you, sir. I'll do that, Anurag. So uh, in terms of uh, subsidiary at uh, Dubai, uh, the prime purpose of the subsidiary was to uh, further our sales in the region. Uh, uh, the Middle East and the North African market is a very scattered market, and we realized that it would be very good if we have local people there. So uh, we kept Dubai as a base, and uh, we'll have sales teams or local people uh, across the various regions and the countries for furthering our sales. So there is bound to be no capex; it's only operational expenditure. moment, uh, we have no further expenditure on human nutrition. Like I indicated, uh, we have the plant on these for a 10-year period, and we will be using the complete facility to get into the premix market and further our sales. So even in the human nutrition, at this moment, uh, there is no further capex. Now, now what the capex cycle, what we see um, uh, at this moment is primarily for the two expansion of the two MCC facilities which is a brownfield facility, and the cross carmelo sodium, which will be a greenfield facility at the age. Uh, as regards the OTC, uh, because we are a kind of, uh, you know, the healthcare, we are launching the healthcare, we are having a contract manufactured from some 
trusted, good, reputed players in the North Indian region. And uh, so there is no capex uh, coming in on account of jumping into this category as well. Did I answer your question, Anurag? Yes, sir. That answers my question. Thank you very much for a detailed answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you the sir. next question is from the line of Vignesh Iyer from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, congratulations, sir, on good, good set of numbers. <coughs> in in such a circumstances, uh, I just wanted to know about uh, our uh, this sodium excipient, cross sodium excipient. So, what is the now uh, expected date of commencement of production of uh, as in commencement of that uh, facility or production facility? Can you tell me? So. Uh, yes, uh, so Vignesh, uh, we are in the current process of getting the EC clearance for our, the, the hedge land which we have acquired recently. So uh, because EC is, it, uh, is an activity which uh, kind of goes uh, from 6 months to 12 months, we really are not in a position to commit you a date. But uh, once the EC clearance is uh, in place, uh, we will definitely have a date to it because everything else is already structured in the project management team members. So uh, once the EC is kind of in our hand, we will give a date to it. But at this moment, it will be inappropriate to bring out a specific date, sir. Okay. But, but in la oh, okay, fair enough. So, uh, and uh, coming to second, uh, I remember the last call, uh, you had given uh, the, uh, the spreads were around average $500 if I'm not wrong. So if you could uh, comment on how, how the spreads are as, uh, as of now, means. <clears throat> okay, I um, I'll have to go deeper into this. Into this, uh, OSR, oh, you have an idea um, uh, of this uh, the the spread being discussed? Yeah, that uh, spread uh, uh, Jagadia and the H. The project cost you are uh, talking, uh, uh, Vignesh? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, this uh, Jagadia and the H, um, uh, uh, there is a total of 29 crores at the H and uh, 29 crores at Jagadia and 27 crores at uh, the H. Out of which, yes, 16 crores is unspent as on uh, 30th June and uh, that also will be completed uh, by end of uh, this year. Means before first quarter, before last quarter of this year, uh, we will incur uh, the capex and uh, CCS that is unspent, that is uh, 33 crores is there. The total unspent amount uh, that is lying in uh, fixed deposits with banks. No, no, sir. Means I asked about the product spread that we we had discussed in the last quarter's phone call about the product. How the spreads were turning to be? You said it would be somewhere around seven hundred to nine hundred dollars. Then, but the average spread came around five hundred dollars uh, okay. to ascertain how the prices were of the product. Yeah. So I just wanted to know. Comp Compared to that, uh, how is the spread as, as things stand now? Yeah, the pricing spread. Ah, yeah, yeah, pricing. Yeah, the, uh, the pricing, uh, last year it was 182 average and uh, this first quarter uh, we have achieved uh, 216.79 mm -hmm. and uh, going forward uh, it will further increase. Uh, so, uh, in if, terms if of it is raw material, yeah, okay. that is around, uh, uh, now it is increased almost 20-25% uh, uh, from uh, okay. 650 to now 850 900 uh, dollars per metric ton. Okay, so, uh, so the, the average would be around 900 dollars this quarter? That is on higher side, but average that would be around 8, uh, 28-30 dollars. Uh, okay, uh, just sir, one thing. So, if if I go quarter on quarter, uh, there is around eight percent improvement in net sales. So, how much is the contribution toward volume, and how much is due to realization? Is there a degrowth in volume? Yeah. Uh, around nineteen percent is there on uh, price realization, and the quantity is uh, ten percent is there. So, means ten percent degrowth in volume. You mean to say? 10% that is uh, no, no. the pricing of raw material is different and the uh, selling price is different. No, no, I am I am asking if quarter on quarter I compare sales, the sales has increased by 8%. So I wanted to know quarter on quarter what is the contribution yeah. uh, by volumes yeah. and by uh, realizing. I, I didn't tell this is the last quarter versus current year. Uh, but yes. you see the revenue growth that is around 45% is there from uh, Q1 of last year versus Q1 of current year. 
and uh, in uh, the pricing uh, last fi22 uh, the pricing is average pricing is, was 182 now the in the first quarter uh, the average pricing is uh, 216.8 around 217 uh, is the price that is on selling price okay okay fine okay thank you very much yeah, thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of Sagar Shah from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, my uh, first question uh, was regarding to your capacity. I, uh, I guess your capacity is around 13,800 tons per annum. So basically, first, uh, first question was related to the from, uh, volume numbers actually. Sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, Mr. Sagar Shah, there's a lot of disturbance from your line. Uh, one second. Uh, can you give your volume number, sir, please? Volume, uh, last year it was 13,800 metric tons. This year, uh, uh, roughly more than uh, 14,000, uh, around 14,500 metric tons. It is uh, available as on uh, based on uh, first quarter uh, results. First quarter performance. So your uh, 14,500 tons is your yeah. is your current uh, yes. is your, uh, current sales volume. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, let me tell you. In the last quarter, uh, it will uh, it will vary because of uh, additional uh, capacities will come in. Additional capacities of 7,000 uh, will be added in the last quarter. As of now, uh, this is uh, 3,650 in the for one quarter. That is equivalent to uh, for four quarters, it will be 14,600 metric tons. Without considering the additional uh, okay. increase. Okay. Okay. Basically, 3,650 tons is your uh, sales volume for this quarter. Yeah, that is the capacity installed. Okay. And so we have achieved around 3,500. Around 95-96% uh, is the utilization. Okay, so basically, we, what is your uh, nameplate capacity for MCC currently, sir? Uh, can you please repeat the capacity? You, uh, yeah, the, what is the total capacity of the company? The manufacturing yeah. capacity of the company? Yeah, yeah, that's what uh, MCC, the manufacturing capacity. 4,600 uh, uh, per annum will come without considering the upcoming uh, uh, increased uh, capacity. In last quarter, it is going to add up for 7,000 metric tons without considering that uh, right now based on first quarter. First quarter, uh, the cap available capacity is 3,650 metric tons. Oh. If that is multiplied by 4, this is, uh, it will come 14,600. Uh, 14,600 is your uh, capacity of the company. Okay, so now my uh, as we are pouring into a different product for uh, human nutrition. So uh, can you explain first of all what is the market or uh, globally and in and in specifically in the domestic market the market size. Secondly, uh, the EBITDA margins of this segment are as same as the MCC. I wanted to understand on that part. The EBITDA margins are uh, uh, even lower than uh, MCC. These margins are lower than MCC. And, okay, so, uh, the, so what are the margins sir, in, in that segment? Can you please say? Yeah, that is uh, now it is under a very preliminary stage, but uh, less than okay. this. But this year uh, we may expect uh, around uh, 18 uh, crores of revenue from that. Uh, still, um, uh, we need to uh, study further and then that is a very pre preliminary stage here uh, to tell you any figure. Okay, so basically 18 crores of revenue you are expecting in the entire year, right? Yeah, this year, yes. And what is the amount that you will be spending for this capacity? For, I think you told that you will be taking some land on lease. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. This is on uh, lease premises. The lease... Uh, uh, so, what is the amount that you will be spending to produce this product? Yeah, this is uh, 15 uh, operational expenditure towards lease rental and uh, roughly 1.8 CR uh, is the lease rental. This is uh, without any incurrence of capex, uh, we can uh, generate the revenues. 
and uh, we explore our uh, market uh, networking also with this and you know, OTC. That is an additional advantage to enter into a B2C segment. Yeah, uh, but 1.5 crores uh, that, that, uh, is the lease rental for the entire year, right? Yeah, yes, it's 1.8, 15 lakhs per month. Okay, for the revenue that you are expecting from this segment. No. Okay, now my uh, next question was related to your, uh, the, uh, uh, we, uh, you have already told about your NCC uh, which is going to commission you to for FI23. But uh, until they understand that yes, product actually, uh, can you explain the market size? Can you explain the significance of this product? And can you explain the on the realization front? Uh, which one are you are talking about? The existing NCC or uh, the uh, CCS cross uh, cross terminal loss? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, this uh, it will take time, not this year it will come, but this uh, we are uh, just uh, acquired land and then uh, we have applied for uh, the, we need to get, to get the EC, EC clearances and other uh, approvals for setting up this plant. And this is, uh, uh, the realization is also higher when we compare it to MCC, cross carbonyl sodium. Uh, this is uh, a superior grade of excipient. Yeah, so uh, my uh, question was that uh, you are saying this is a superior product as compared to NCC. It has a wider uh, significance. So why are you focusing on the other segment on the nutrition part instead of focus not focusing on CCS or uh, maybe yeah. expanding even more on this no, segment? Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, uh, it is not that we are not focusing on CCS, sir. CCS is already a work in progress. We are looking at uh, getting the EC certification of the facility and proceeding with the project. So it is not that uh, by focusing on the nutrition part, we are defocusing on uh, the CCS. There are two separate teams, there are two separate facilities, and uh, there are different locations. So um, it is it is uh, not that we are defocusing on CCS. CCS continues to be as part of our agenda, and it's a work in progress, which will finally justify and it will give us revenues. Mm -hmm. Okay. All so, are uh, prime areas only, sir, and uh, there are uh, specialized people, and uh, uh, we'll take care of all are important uh, for the company. Okay. So, uh, and my uh, last question, sir, was uh, the bit more that the company is, uh, are enjoying is enjoying right now in the first quarter around 21, 22 percent. Are they sustainable for the entire year even, and even for next year? Some kind of EBITDA margin guidance can you give? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These are sustainable uh, margin. Uh, profits, even growth and uh, even uh, EBITDA and uh, profit margins are uh, sustainable in future. Okay. Okay. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Kushal from Strontium Enterprises. Please go ahead. My first question is for CFO. Uh, since we export, 60% uh, of our revenue comes from export. And are we reaping the benefits of rupee depreciation? If yes, what is the revenue mix across geographies? And what does this rupee depreciation impact on our margins, either positive or negative? And also, how is Sigachi positioned to face the macroeconomic headwinds? And are we process are we um, moving any price hikes? And uh, are we comfortable? And uh, customers are they comfortable with price hikes? And uh, is it impacting the margins going forward? Yes, yes. It is um, coming to the uh, export uh, export business, and uh, almost we have uh, even 75% uh, of our uh, uh, products goes uh, into abroad export, and uh, around 25% uh, comes from the domestic uh, market. And in rupee appreciation, uh, rupee depreciation, the exchange fluctuation uh, impact that is a positive for us because uh, we are the net forex uh, earnings uh, surplus is there. And uh, this is a favorable law uh, for the company. And uh, any increase in raw material costs, we could able to pass on to the customers. 
and uh, any increase uh, because of um, uh, this uh, adverse uh, uh, rupee fluctuation uh, in uh, uh, considering the services or uh, imports that we could able to pass and then uh, anyway on exports we are getting uh, the benefit out of it my second question would be for the so they are uh, taking we could able to pass it on and then they are accepting it yeah okay okay fine that clears my question my second question would be for ceo and in the recent interview with economic times you have said that the nutraceutical segment revenue would be 20 to 20 to 50% of total revenues in the next 2 years and you also said about the total revenues would be close to doubling in the next 2 years and uh, is the ebit margin of 20 similar to 20% sustainable in the next 2 years So uh, the EBIT margins of uh, the, our excipient line are definitely sustainable and going forward as we add in capacities for uh, MCC and we expand into the portfolio of CCS, we believe that the margins are only going to get better. Uh, on account of uh, the expansion into uh, the nutrition and into uh, certain OTC healthcare products, we definitely see an increase in top line. Uh, in the initial phase, uh, we see that, uh, you know, uh, positioning ourselves so that we are able to capture more market, uh, we would have uh, certain um, EBITAs, uh, you know, drop in margins on uh, our average uh, 20% EBITA, lower than that. Uh, however, uh, as we continue to service and as we continue to expand our product portfolio, we believe that we should be able to come back to our base margin of 20% EBITA. And uh, you are foreign into the Dubai subsidiary, and when can we expect it to be commissioned? And how, when can uh, when, so the, when can it uh, be operational? Yes, uh, the Dubai subsidiary is uh, more of a market presence rather than a facility. We are not investing into a facility in Dubai. Dubai is not the best place for a facility. It's only a market presence where we'll have local teams local teams to kind of, uh, you know, go out to the North African region, to the Middle East region, and further our sales. So that activity is already underway. We have appointed a CEO for the Dubai subsidiary, and uh, we will be appointing the local people there to take on the sales team roles. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be taking the last question. That is in the line of Dharma Venkatesan, an individual inv investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and hope you are doing well and good, sir. Thank you, Dharma. We are doing good. Uh, sir, I have two suggestions, not questions actually. First suggestion is that uh, even the, it was actually already referred, but I'm just referring it again here. Regarding the royalty which we are paying, uh, like it would, uh, like I would suggest the management to consider it more in terms of a performance related uh, some kind of payment on that of net sales, uh, net profit rather than of net sales. That is the first suggestion. And second, second question, second thing would be regarding the ethanol. What like what is the thought process in the first place to consider it? Because we don't we don't have any kind of uh, forward or backward integration or any kind of uh, anything related to that ethanol thing as such. So what was the first thought in process in that to consider that in the first place? Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Dharma. I appreciate your suggestion. On the first suggestion of uh, royalty, uh, we did have a question earlier in uh, the con call and uh, we did indicate that uh, rather than having it as a figure of um, the top line, it should be on the performance base as a figure of the bottom line and uh, we uh, we have confirmed to him that we will do our homework and see which way we can align so that uh, it is fair. Uh, now in terms of the second question of ethanol, uh, uh, as and when uh, you know uh, the, the, the political leadership were coming out with certain um, overall broad targets and activities in terms of uh, having an ethanol blend on our fuel. Uh, we thought it could be a good opportunity and uh, we did appoint a consultant to explore feasibility. Uh, that is currently underway and as we explore and as we talk more to the stakeholders, we realize that, uh, you know, there are certain aspects of this 